This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Miami! Commission control. We have the dog. Welcome to the Fin Hub Show, the one NFL podcast you can't leave off your roster. Now here's your hosts, Joe and Kevin DeHavo. All right, all right, all right. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Fin Hub Show, powered by BetUS. Before we get any further into the video, a moment from our sponsor. Michael Vick here at BetUS.com. Get it all. Huge bonuses, great odds, a race book, live in-game betting, and a casino. Bet US, my online sports book and casino. All right, cool. So if you haven't already, make sure to place your bets on Bet US. We got the upcoming game against Tampa Bay at seven. So make sure to place your bets. All right, Kevin. So let's get into today's uh, or yesterday's practice against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We had a, a joint practice and. We had Tua starting off. It was it was a rocky start, but then he picked it up and was was pretty sharp throughout practice. Yeah. But other than that, was there anything else that you uh, saw? Well, what what I liked was the fact that I saw the Azucamas continuing to to make plays and look good out there. And something that's really needed with all the injuries that we've had at wide receiver, and the fact that River Cravecraft is probably not going to be with us for the majority of the season. Um, but yeah, seeing that he can step up when, you know, everyone's going down pretty much. I love that. I think he's he's kind of a lock to make the roster at this point. If he just solidifies it with a nice preseason game this coming Saturday, if he can make it out there, because we did see that he was limping off the field at the end. Um, yeah, that that's something huge. I think it's something that obviously we need and we want to see him make that that jump, you know, have that growth in his third year because you never know. Maybe there's a guy that can stick around and be a part of this team for a while, you know, um, especially all the things he provides, but also the youth. That's something that we need because, yeah, once, <laughs> yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah, once uh, Tyree Kill goes away. Sorry, that's the Spanish coming out of me. But um, mm -hmm. once Tyree Kill is gone and, you know, OBJ is not going to be here forever and all that other stuff, you want to have some continuity in that room. Mm -hmm. And you want to see guys like Ezukama, Malik, and, Jalen Waddle's Jalen Waddle, but you want to see those guys step up. So I think it's it's beautiful to see. Well, speaking of Jalen Waddle, Jalen Waddle finally makes his return back to practice. Yeah. So that's a, another really good sign for the Dolphins, especially in that room. Yeah. But yeah, as a Conwell with another good day, he's really stacking up on these these positive days here. Uh, and, he, yeah, he's and it's building coming up that momentum. A, yeah, it's coming off that fantastic preseason game. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That. He's really building up some momentum going into the regular season and with the way that the with the way that things are happening in that wide receiver room, it is very important that he does that. And we do need somebody to step up other than the obvious, you know, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. Yeah. OBJ, it looks like he's gonna start off the year kinda iffy, if he even starts off the year with us. Yeah. Um River Craycraft with that injury. Do you so, that, and mm -hmm. quick question, do you think he's gonna start off the year? Or do you think he might have to come off uh, IR. You know, the, do you think he'll be be off the pup list before we start the year? The thing is, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a clear answer to that. There's no, you know, everyone has like theories online yeah. uh, about what's really going on. What would the, you, what would you guess? Just, I think he is. Me too. I have a feeling All he right. is going to start the season with us, but um, you never know. I think know. they're like really just gradually trying to bring him back, and you don't want to rush someone that's already coming back from injury get them on the field for them to play like a game or two and then just be injured the rest of the year. It doesn't make sense. So. Yeah, and and I think that what uh, McDaniel is doing here, he's being, ever since that crazy injury with Tua, he's become very, very cautious with I love our it, players. Though. I love it. And I think last year, even though Tua was able to sustain, you know, was, was able to uh, play out an entire season, even still, you see down the line, not just at quarterback, but... Now you saw the receiving room. We were banged up towards the end of that, uh, towards the end of our run last year, and it really hurt us. Yeah, you know. So 
maybe this is a way of him controlling some of that early on in the season, you know, before the season even starts. But now maybe in the beginning, maybe this is where you see guys like Eric Azukanma really take more of a load. So that way Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle aren't the only guys getting that attention, the only guys getting banged up. Maybe, you know, take some of that pressure off of them. And I think just with the way that we're building out this roster, you bring in a guy like uh, John o. Smith, even Jody Fortson to, you know, pass catching spread tight ends the ball around, to right? spread the ball around a little bit more. So Well, it kind of goes with, uh, you know, two on the Levitard show the other day was saying that, I don't know if you caught that, but mm -hmm. he was basically saying that, uh, so Tyreek, Tua, and Waddle all had the understanding that they were trying to get uh, Tyreek that 2,000 yard mark. I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't. So if we can put a little clip here, we'll find it. No, I, I think we've um, I think we've all like we we've all established a good enough relationship um, to really to really know like okay like last year it we we were in a way really trying to help re get to that two hundred or two thousand yard mark. Right. I mean it wasn't it wasn't like we were trying to hide that right that that was pretty obvious you know trying to feed them the ball and whatnot. We all have a good enough relationship off the field to where Jalen can come up to me at any point, even in the games and whatnot, and tell me like, like, bro, I'm not, I'm not messing with this. Like you, like I, I need some, some shine too, you know? And I can go up to Mike and say, hey, like we need some more plays for, for X, you know, in, in this drive or throughout this game. And we, like Reek would be cool with that. Well, the cool thing about it was like Jalen knew like we were we were trying to do that for Reek and he wasn't really like he was like dude I'm I'm just here to support like That's awesome. whatever I can do like if if I get the ball I'm making the the best out of that opportunity and whatnot so like those guys I mean they're they 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 make it easy but they're they they are tough that doesn't mean they're 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 easy you know um to have conversations with because they they are unique in their own sense of personalities as well so yeah you you see that it's it's kind of open and we saw that it was we were force feeding Tyreek and that leads to these injuries right because if you're constantly getting the ball you're gonna get banged up I mean he's getting the ball like almost 10 times a game you know what yeah. I'm saying so it's gonna happen obviously it's not always 10 times a game but even then you're just he's not a big yeah. guy he's not a big frame so at the end of the day if we can if we can start to spread the ball around and get it to Waddle get it to Tyreek get it to Janu get it to you know some of the running backs uh let's say obj whatever the case may be you're gonna ex extend their their life you know what i'm saying so yeah. sorry for you laughing <laughs> i don't know but uh, talking too much no i don't know that was that was good i i just had like an out of body experience i don't know why yeah. but um anyway uh <laughs> Yeah, no, it is It is true. Like, you have, like, uh, we were force-feeding him the ball, and luckily we saw in the beginning of the summer, Tyreek Hill had put, a, put up a post saying uh, 2K loading, which, yeah. you know, it gets, it gets people excited, but at the same time, it's rubbing people the wrong way because that's not what's important. What's important is chasing that trophy. And it's team and success. he came out recently and said that 2,000 yards is no longer important to him. Yeah. It's about winning. I mean, it makes so, sense, right? Because you're not the only person on this team, first of all. But second of all, the ultimate goal should always be to win a Super Bowl. I mean, that's that's the reason why they play the game, right? Yeah. You got paid. You have your numbers. Like, let's just win. And I do think Tyreek getting the ball is the best chance for us to win. But we also need him. We need him at the end of the season. Throughout the as season. Well. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do I do like that. Eric Azukan was coming back from injury and, and looking the way he's looking because it's going to help take off a little bit of that load. But aside from that, we also had Ethan Bonner come back from his concussion in the preseason game, and he played amazing in practice like today. A bat out of hell. So um, that's another really good sighting for the Dolphins. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this right now, but I like Ethan Bonner more than Cam Smith, and I, I don't think it's even close. I don't... Uh, I don't think you're really saying anything I don't crazy think it's a bold statement. Point. I mean, the only reason why it's bold is because one is undrafted, the other is a second-round pick. But right. Ethan Bonner wants it more, and it almost seems like he's just as talented, man. I, I feel, though, that Cam Smith, um, you know, he's had a bad uh, string of injuries lately. 
But you know, so, honestly, it's it's just like the same thing with Azukama. You can have all the talent in the world and all that. Yeah, if you're not the on the field, the best ability is matter. availability. And if you can't mm -hmm. be on the field, you can't shine and you can't play. I mean, next man up, and that's Ethan Bonner. And I think he's doing a fantastic job. And I think he is not only locked to make the roster, but I think we're going to see him out there this year. And I think he's yeah. going to get like some... With the way that he's played lately, he's definitely vying for some playing time. Yeah. So. I love it, man. I, I think it's great. I think it's great, too. Yeah. We got our own uh, Cooper. Yeah. Which Co I, I heard Cooper DeGene's probably going to be playing, making his debut in the next preseason game. So. Oh, okay. I didn't know he had his Indian. <laughs> I didn't know he didn't even start, so that's cool. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm going to check that game out because I'm interested to see how that looks out there. But um, I think talking about Ethan Bonner, we can get into Storm Doug, too, because I think he started in place of Jalen Ramsey today, and apparently mm -hmm. he had a hell of a day. So Yeah. That... That success in the preseason games is also extending into practices, and I think this guy is is somewhat maybe a lock to make the roster as well. I think he's too talented to not keep him. He's building up that confidence, and with a name like that, you definitely have to roster him. Yeah. Storm Duck, come on. He had a pick six today in practice, too. Yeah. So his confidence is really building up since these preseason games, and he's looking like the real deal. I think he's going to make the team, too. I really like these uh, these corners that we have. Yeah. And they're all young, that Jason Maytre, uh, Ethan Bonner, uh, Perry. And then we got the the young safety and Patrick McMorris. So. Yeah, someone, someone's going to get um Yeah, someone's, someone's going to have to get the off. boot. But I do think they can. we can make it so that they get on the practice squad. I don't think anyone's going to snag them. So I don't know, man. That's Let's see. But, I mean... It seems like it's a pretty loaded position now because there's so many receivers and, and corners coming out right. now because it's just such an important position. There's so much talent flooding into those positions because they know those are the positions that are getting paid and are very important in the NFL today. So I think it's just it's just that. You know? Well, now that we've spoken about these young corners, we have some of the older guys who also made an impact today in practice Yeah, or, or yesterday in practice, um, Calais Campbell. And Zach Sealer. And Zach Sealer, they yeah. were they were making their presence felt today, so, uh, yesterday. Jeez, I keep saying that. It's okay. Um, but yeah, that was a uh, that was really cool. No, I think it's I think it's cool to see Campbell, you know, still in his age thirty seven season. Mm -hmm. Right, he's thirty seven, I believe. Yeah, thirty seven. Uh, for him to still be this dominant and like, you know, be able to lead this group of men, you know, what I'm saying the way he does, I think he's awesome. I think his. His talent, his experience, his leadership is invaluable, and I think he's gonna really help this this team gel under you know year one with Anthony Weaver. I mm -hmm. think he's, I think that signing low key might have been the best one this off season. And that, that's up there for me. Yeah, and that's I up think there for me. it's crazy, right? Because you see, see, they're coming up with Wilkins all throughout, but now you actually got a veteran that could show Sealer a thing or two rather than him coming up with another guy, right? Well, so Sealer had two sacks today. Sealer's a monster, I though. think Sealer's going to have an amazing season. To be honest with you, and this isn't the homer in me because Sealer's the one that stayed, I always liked Sealer more than Wilkins. That's... I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. The, the value for a guy like Sealer in comparison to what you're getting... Um, what you're paying Wilkins for? It's crazy. It's there's it's no like, comparison. It's it, what is it? Twenty seven million dollars a year? I think it's fourteen million less, if I'm not mistaken. It, Are we paying him thirteen or less? I, I think it know. might even be less. If we could look that up and put that yeah. up, I think we should. But I do know it's a ridiculous amount. Uh, ridiculous amount. Like as far as the. Oh, yeah, the, the so comparison. Often. I mean, if and if you just look at the the numbers and what we were able to get just by not taking on Wilkins, look at what we could do. Yeah. With these other with, with all that money that we were going to spend on Wilkins, look at all the players that we added here. So, that's that's another really big reason why I'm excited for this defense. I feel like now we're not so heavy in one position or anything. Like we've really spread out that money and we've spread it out well. Not to mention all of these young corners that we've brought in and they're they're looking the part too. There's a lot to be excited about on this defense, yeah, especially man. once Jalen Phillips is 100% ready, which it's starting to look like him playing in in, in game one is not really you it's, know far-fetched. It's not a stretch. Now, the question mark here is still where is Bradley Chubb, but... I think we haven't heard anything, any negative reports. So that's a positive. That's a win there. Yeah. So I, I think we maybe we miss out on him the first four games, 
But I think we could see him, you know, maybe... Maybe back by week five, they that, slowly ramp him up to get him. That second quarter of the season, yeah. yeah. And I think uh, I think Jalen Phillips is coming back is huge, and it allows us not to feel like the sky is falling mm-hmm. with, those edge, with the edge room because it does allow Bradley Chubb to take his time coming back, be 100%, because if Jalen Phillips feels fine, you got Chop that looks like a stud already. Mo Kamara looks pretty decent, you know, coming out... Um, you also have uh, Ogba coming back, a very solid player, actually way more fit for this Anthony Weaver scheme. I think we're good, and I think we can take our time with it. But, um, but yeah, man, I'm really excited about this defense, all the, the uh, improvements we've made, especially at the linebacker position. I think Jordan Brooks, man, you see him on the field, he is playing the lightest he's ever played in the NFL, but it shows in his speed, but he's still got that boom, and he's still got that hit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like... I think it's it's fantastic. We we get yet to see uh, our other linebacker that we signed, which was uh, oh uh, what's his name? Yeah, from the Browns. From the Browns, Anthony Walker Jr. Anthony Walker Jr., which is another hell of a linebacker. Um, there's just so there's many a lot of talent. There's, there's a lot, a of, lot talent of talent and it's spread out. It's yeah. all over. So we we definitely can't underachieve this year, but um, but yeah, man, I'm I'm just excited. The sky's the limit for the Dolphins, and I think this is the most talent we've ever had, to be yeah. honest with you. You know, going going to uh, now back to the offensive side, something that we're noticing here too is it looks like tight end one through three is locked in and Julian Hill has solidified his place as maybe not only tight end three, but the tight end, the future tight end for the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. He's a really, he's a really likable guy. Like if you watch his interviews, you see the way he speaks. He loves football. He's a physical dude. I really like what I see from him. He he's he's hungry. He wants to learn. Um, recently, they were talking about. Uh, they were asking him to check out some some film uh, from George Kittle. That's uh, crazy. To That's... check out George Kittle, see what see how he plays ball, and you know it makes you wonder like what does Mike McDaniel have in store uh, for Julian Hill? So. I'm I'm really curious to see what the evolution of this player is going to be and if he will be that guy for the Dolphins. And before we get any further into it, uh, here's a clip of what Julian Hill had to say recently. Did John Ember give you a project this offseason? Did he ask you to review every one of your snaps? What what did he ask you specifically? Yeah, he asked me, uh, watch George Kittle. You know, he's one of the best blocking tight ends in the league. Um, watch... Uh, Watch him in his route game, watch him in his uh, run blocking, you know, because they have a very similar offense. You know, he's a very similar play style, similar body. So just watch him, watch how he gets after it, watch how he uh, blocks the ends, watch how he catches the ball. And, you know, he's one of the best yak tight ends in the league. Watch how he, you know, makes a play after the catch. Um, And just really work on my second step in the run game, work on getting off the ball, work on eye discipline when my hands are going, you know, catching the ball. Um, Because a lot of times we always want to get upfield and make a play, you know, focus on catching the ball jugs and you know all sorts of things so um and i'm very thankful uh, a lot of stuff is, is working out is panning out man man it's it's an honor uh, you know i i remember again retrospect man last year looking at the, all the guys even this year i call them the ogs you know all the guys the older guys that's been in the league for a while that's that's earned that that orange jersey man i look at those guys last year and i was like man i, I want one of those because it represents something you know what i mean it represents a guy who's embodying what a dolphin means um, so me just to put that on the coaches to give me that, uh, it, was, it, it was a surprise to me, you know, especially being a young guy. Um, but, man, I was extremely honored just to re- wear that. And the playlist, man, I had to make sure. I didn't know um, how important the playlist was before today. Like, every, in warm-ups, man, every old guy coming out there, he's like, but the playlist good? All right, now we better make sure, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that orange jersey, you better make sure your playlist is right. When do you find out you're the orange jersey guy? Um, so... You get like a random message, uh, you know, either the day before or the day of, um, and it literally, literally it's a surprise. You know, nobody knows when it's coming. Nobody knows when it's when so it they is. So they say, okay, we need your playlist. Yep, yep, yep. And again, man, it's, it's an honor. You know what I mean? So first thing I said, man, God doing his thing. And I'm excited. I got my playlist ready. Uh, Two of love the reggae I had going on. You know. Uh, Chubb and, and Jalen, they like the young thug. You know, I had a flavor for everybody. The coaches like the old school Tupac I had going, so uh, it, w- it was a good playlist. <laughs> it went out how important blocking is from the tight ends in this offense, but uh, do you guys talk about wanting to produce more in the past game? Oh, for sure, man. You know, as tight ends, man, we always want to, you know, do whatever we need to do for the team. Um, and 
for me especially, um, I, I want to make sure whatever coach tells me to do, if it's go get some damn water, I'm going to go get that, that water. You know what I mean? If it's um, block this guy, I'm going to block that guy. If it's to run this route, I'm going to run this route. And, you know, we always want to make plays on the field, but sometimes you just got to do, do what your job is requiring you in that moment. Um, and sometimes that's, that's, that's all you need from a, in, a, in a team sport. What would a first NFL touchdown mean to you? Oh, man, come on. I mean, everything. In college, I didn't catch my first touchdown until my senior year of college. So that it, it will mean everything, but I'm not, I'm not tripping on that. The fact that I'm just out here, I'm on this field, man, at this podium. I thought the podium was somewhere else. I didn't even know it was right here. So, you know what I mean? I'm just to be right here in the moment, man. You just, touchdown be everything, my man. Just representing what, what I got on my chest, you know, it, it means a lot more. So, yeah, honestly, I think it's it's really cool. I think the fact that we have John Embry, one of the best tight end coach in, coaches in the league, and you pair that with Mike McDaniel, which had such a great relationship with George Kittle, has certain things up his sleeve to, I guess, throw wrinkle into this playbook with uh, tight ends. If, if this guy can step up and become a better player, because we see that the talent's there, the drive is there. If he can step up and become the tight end of the future for us, I think it's fantastic. I think it's really exciting. But uh, the what I'm most excited to see is John Smith and yeah, what he can bring, because he is actually a, a very talented receiver. And he could technically be our third best receiver on this team with an OBJ on this team. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's extremely cool. There's not really much else to say other than <laughs> there's so many things to be excited about on this the team. The only you know? thing, again, even you know in the last episode we talked about it, but that offensive line is atrocious and there needs to be yeah. something done there. But Mike McDaniel did say... What, what was it exactly that he said? He did uh, yesterday? say there's still things they're still things that they're trying to figure out on the line. So. Okay, so they're they're possibly I'm I'm expecting the Dolphins to make some kind of move at the end of preseason. I think if they're really serious about contending, they need to make a move. Yeah. it's not like the sky's falling. I I don't think this makes us a bad team if we roll into the season with what we have. But I do think there is a cause for concern, and and right. we did say this in the last episode that can completely derail your season. Yeah, and there's no need for that. There's no need for that. If you can if you can take every bit of doubt out of the equation and you can bring someone in, someone talented, someone that you know is better than what you have, I say it's a no-brainer. You have to do it. Forget about the draft capital because the time this, is now. The time is now. The we time is now. Our window, we, we bought ourselves another three seasons. Yeah, you need to take advantage of that Tyreek Hill window. Mm-hmm. The Tua window, because, I mean, Tua's not going to be here forever either. I mean, yeah. it's plain and simple. But having Tua, Tyreek, and Waddle, and I know it's only about offense that I'm talking about, but that talent, that three-headed monster, it's not going to be there forever. And we'd be lucky to see this again yeah, in, you in know, the future. You know what I'm saying? So You know, I was thinking about this the other day, but I was like, you know, it's crazy how we had a guy like Xavier Howard and I'm not talking about the Xavier Howard from the last two seasons. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Xavier Howard in his in his hole as a Miami Dolphin. He had a great career with us, you he know. Did. And um, it it's really a shame that we weren't able to maximize that. Like he wasn't really a part of anything big, you know. So I don't want to see that happen with the talent that we have here. Like the time is now we are stacked everywhere else make a move on the offensive line because that's the only thing that could possibly be holding us back i will say adding on to that you are saying we didn't take advantage of those xavier and howard years but we weren't able to to get these players that we have now no. and the only reason why we're able to do this is because of mike mcdaniel yeah and how yeah. likable he is and how much people believe in him and that he started building that reputation from his years back in the day with Kyle Shanahan before that, playing yep. under Kyle Shanahan's freaking father. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he established this persona and this, I guess, aura, you can say. And he's created this culture for the organization. Yeah, man. And everyone knows who Mike McDaniel is and says, anyone that's ever been blessed to play under him has said, that's a fantastic human being. I want to play with that guy. He's like one of the boys. You know what I'm saying? So... I'm happy he's our coach. He is the best thing possible. And it, it's kind of touching on this whole thing with Brian Flores. I don't care what anyone says. It's night and day, the respect that one demands over the other. And he's doing it in a different way. He's not down your throat and talking shit. He's just like, I want to be 
I want to be cool with you guys, but I do demand respect at the same time. And he demands respect because he expects the best out of his players. And I think that's that's more than enough. Yeah. So I love it, honestly. Yeah, we have a, a honestly, this is the happiest I've been with the organization yeah. as a whole and since my entirety as a Dolphins fan. So, mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I think that's going to do it, wrap it up for today. If you guys haven't placed your bets on BetUS yet, make sure to do that before the game on Saturday. And uh, we will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.